Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. I have another video full of historical romance recommendations, this time with some unique historical romances that I've read. And if you didn't know, the historical romance readathon has begun. I'm co-hosting this one with my friends Lisa from Remarkably Lisa and Jessica from Peace Love Books. It's running from January 15th through the 21st, so if you want to join us, please do. But for this video, I wanted to share with you guys some unique historical romances that aren't your typical, like, regions see historical romances or even like western historical romances. All of these will have some unique element to them and that really makes it stand out to me. So the first recommendation I have is actually a series. It is a historical fantasy series, historical steampunk series. It was published quite a while ago. It is from a fairly popular author but this series is definitely one of her more underrated books and that is The Darkest London series by Kristen Callahan. So like I said earlier it is a historical fantasy it's set actually in the Regency era, like the late 1800s, except, you know, the big difference is that there are supernatural creatures in this world. There are people that are part steampunk, there are shifters, there's magic, there's just a lot of stuff going on in this series and in this world, and it's also full of action. So book one is Firelight, which I will admit is not really my favorite of the series. We have a heroine who has this power of conjuring fire, and that's caused a lot of tragedy in her life. The hero is an aristocrat and noble Men, but he's also disfigured. He has a lot of scars that he hides behind masks, so it's very like Phantom of the Opera-ish. Her family forces her to marry him because they have no money. There's a whole mystery with a series of murders and the hero is one of the suspects. This one is a marriage of convenience historical romance, but just paranormal. Again, it's not my favorite of the series, but it was like a good intro to the rest of the series, which I devoured right after. And I will say the series does get considerably better with each each book. Book two is called Moon Glow, and we have a shifter hero, a werewolf hero. He's a Marquis, but of course he does have to hide the fact that he does turn into a wolf. The heroine is a widow, but right after she's found this new freedom, she witnesses this werewolf attack, and that werewolf is now after her. The hero happens to come across her and finds out that this werewolf is trying to kill her, so he decides to keep her safe and protect her from that werewolf. So if you love shifters and you love historicals, this one would be perfect to read. This one was one that really got me hooked onto the series. But book three is one of my favorites of the series, to no one's surprise, because it is a second chance romance. Winter Blaze is a second chance romance between an already married couple. The husband is a police inspector and the wife is a supernatural. She's in a society full of supernaturals that knows about all these creatures that run amok in London. What breaks them apart is when the hero is attacked by a werewolf and finds out that there's this whole other supernatural world and that his his wife is part of that world and has been lying to him about it for their entire marriage. I love this one. I remember loving the angst here. And what was really cool was that the heroine has this elemental power like the first heroine did and she controls ice. The next two books in the series were both five star reads for me. This is obviously when I was obsessed with the series. Book four is Shadow Dance and here we have an enemies to lovers historical fantasy romance. The main characters have been enemies and rivals for years. The heroine is part steampunk. She's got parts of her body that are just machine and the hero is a shifter and they're forced to work together to find this killer who's been killing all these supernaturals. So enemies to lovers, lots of animosity, lots of banter, so so good. Another favorite of the series is the next book, book five, called Evernight. We have a demon hero who is an assassin for hire but he's slowly losing his sanity which is also causing him a lot of pain and the only thing that seems to take away that pain is the heroine who is his newest assignment and the person that he has to kill next. There's like two more books in the series. Overall, it's a really great series, but my favorites were books in the middle. But if you are looking for some historical romances that are fantasy, paranormal, and action-filled, the series is perfect. And then I have some time travel historical romances that aren't your typical time travel historical romances, mainly because of the time period that these characters time travel to. The first one is the Surviving Time series by Kalia Reed. Book one is the Surviving Trace. In the series, the heroine time travels back from modern day to the early 1900s, like the 1910s, and she lands herself in the American South. And not only does Serene the heroine time travel, she also kind of replaces the Serene of the 1910s as well. The 1900 Serene and the 2000 Serene look the exact same, they have the exact same parents, so it's like she took her place, but of course she is completely confused about how she even got there in the first place, and by the fact that she now has a husband. The hero is this husband, a 
Etienne and I love him so much. Hero actually did not like his original wife. He was not a fan of the original Serene. So when the new Serene appears, they do not get along. Slowly they do start to fall for each other, but then of course there's this whole time travel aspect and her belonging in modern day in the 21st century. It's a great series. There are three books in the series. There are a couple more times of time travel, but I loved how the series ended. It's so, so good. I do have the original cover before she changed it like twice, but I do love this new cover. I've got another time travel romance, except this time we're going way, way back, all the way to early human day, to the caveman days. This book is called Transcendence by Shay Savage. The heroine time travels from modern day all the way to the caveman days, and the hero is literally a caveman. This book is told through Ed's point of view, the hero's point of view, and for a caveman, he is so, so sweet. He finds his mate in the heroine. He is so confused by her, but all he wants to do is provide for her and protect her. And through him, we can see that the heroine is terrified, but trying to survive. The two of them can communicate with each other, though the heroine does try to teach the hero. The two of them are from completely different worlds, but they do find this really sweet love together. It's just a very, very interesting concept that worked out really well. You would think that you wouldn't fall in love with a caveman, but I definitely did with this book. This next one is from an author that I love, and it is The Hunter by Kerrigan Byrne. It is book two in the Victorian Rebel series, but of all the books in the series, I chose this one to recommend for the most unique because the hero is an assassin. He works for the British Empire as this very elite assassin, and his latest assignment is to kill the actress heroine. But as soon as he sees her, he can't do it, he can't kill her, and instead vows to protect her. It is also one of the darkest of the series, so if you want to read something that is a dark historical romance, I would recommend this one. There is lots of angst with the tortured hero. The whole series is great. I love Kerrigan Byrne so much. She writes the best dark anti-heroes. I know a lot of people love the first book, The Highwayman, which I do too, but I also love The Hunter just as much. This next one is one that I recently read and it just took me by surprise. It is Flowers from the Storm by Laura Kinsale. I also have the original Fabio cover classic. This is your fairly typical Regency historical romance with the Duke hero, except this Duke has a stroke. He has a stroke that leaves him with brain damage and he can't think like he used to. He can't communicate. His body just doesn't function like it used to. So everyone else thinks he has gone insane and he's been taken to a mental asylum. And what's interesting is that we do get his point of view. We do get to see how he thinks, how scattered his thoughts are, how frustrating it is for him to come up with a sentence, come up with even a word. It's such an intense and unexpected read. The romance, he actually falls in love with a Quaker. Maddie is a Quaker, which means she uses thee and thou and cans and all those like olden words, which was a bit jarring to read at first, but I did eventually get used to it. But Maddie becomes Christian's new nurse at the mental asylum, and this is when the two of them connect and fall in love. It's just a very strange read, but I enjoyed it so much. It was honestly nothing like I'd ever read. I kept getting so many recommendations recommendations for it, and I'm so, so glad I finally read it. I also wanted to recommend My Darling Duke by Stacey Reed. I've talked about this a couple times on my channel, but this one I had to include for a unique historical romance, mainly because the hero is impotent. He is also scarred and physically disabled from this tragic accident. It's got some Beauty and the Beast vibes. The hero is a recluse because of his scars and his disability. The heroine pretends to be this Duke hero's fiance so that she can elevate her family standing. The Duke hero does find out and forces her to stay with him in exchange for not exposing her. It's friends to lovers. It's slow burn, a very, very slow burn. It was my first time reading Stacey Reed with this book, but I enjoyed the writing a lot. I was not really expecting to read about a hero who's impotent, who has been impotent for like a decade since that accident. And even though an impotent hero is not something that I would come across very often in a romance, Stacey Reed did make it work. And this last book, is anyone surprised? I have to recommend See a Ruin by Pam Godwin again. It was one of my favorite reads last year. It is a dark, erotic, historical romance with pirates. I don't really see a lot of crossover with dark romance and historical romance, but Pam Godwin did a really great job combining the two. It's an epic romance with an intense love triangle. There is some kidnapping here. You could consider it one of those captive historical romances, but it does play out very differently. The heroine is a badass pirate. I love her. I just love this book. If you 
love both dark romances and historical romances, you definitely need to try this one. So those are some of the more unique historical romances that I've read so far. If you have your own recommendations, please feel free to share them. I would love to read some of them. If you have read any of these books, let me know your thoughts. Links to all of them will be down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!